1987 has been a busy one for local officials and for local cable news. Julie Stinniford now continues her look back at the year in review. The first half of 1987 was one full of various disasters for the city of Lowell. Fire, flood and record snowfalls marked the first six months. After the 9 alarm mill fire in Lowell, though, some good things emerged. Everyone banded together, including the banking community, to help the victims. The banks felt that, that they wanted to do something, something constructive, mm -hmm. and that would be useful at, at this point in time because a lot of lives were disrupted, um, and they felt that, that, that the service that they could offer was uh, the professional uh, or, or con some type of financial service, just to answer a question That's in some right. cases can be very important, and to look into their, um, their financial situation to see if th that mm -hmm. particular bank could assist them in deferring, uh, in deferring payments, uh, at least while the people get back That's on right. their feet. One topic that has come up often this year is the fate of the North Canal housing project. Members of the Coalition for a Better Acre were finally able to win public support from city and state officials in their fight to have the project turned over to the tenants. North Canal is not the ghetto that some people have likened it to. Uh, it is not a totally subsidized project. Um, in fact, uh, currently only 16% of the tenants in North Canal are on Section 8 or uh, uh, 707 certificates. Um, there is a rent ceiling at North Canal, basically, that recognizes the need to keep affordable housing in the city of Lowell, and that is what our goal is, to make sure that that, that remains affordable housing. After things began to settle down in Lowell after the giant mill fire, the area was hit by flooding. Hardest hit were areas in Chelmsford and Pawtucketville. Unfortunately, with the elderly who don't have the mobility that uh, young people have, uh, and they can't, they can't combat it as easily, so of course the, their concerns are much greater, and, and these are the people that we're trying to, to take care of. We'll be watching to see what the, what the state will be doing in this matter and um, also with the federal government. We, we have not received any word on whether the federal government will uh, declare this a disaster area. Lowell saw an unusually snowy winter this past year, a winter that brought in near record amounts of the white stuff as late as the first week in May. Officials had to allocate extra funding to pay for snow removal throughout the region. This was the year Governor Dukakis made his presidential bid official. At the end of April, he tossed his hat into the ring. I believe that our children have a right to live in an environment that is clean and safe and healthy with clean air and clean water and with a nuclear regulatory commission that understands the lessons of Chernobyl and that is committed above all else to the health and safety of our citizens. Lowell's trash problems have been the topic of discussion throughout the year, but the city council last spring took steps that made some environmentalists happy. They voted down the idea of building a 1,500 ton a day trash to energy plant. It should only be common sense to tell you that such things as 300 tons a day of potentially hazardous ash and five and a half tons of lead emissions each year could possibly be good for us. There's only a slight hazard of a health hazard. Well, it's like coming and saying to somebody, I'm only slightly pregnant. You either are or you're not. And I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, tonight is the night where we should cast aside this ridiculous proposal and proceed further in solving the energy problem, the trash problem that we have. Perhaps the hottest topic to kick up during the first part of the year was the whole desegregation issue in Lowell. A remark some considered to be racist by school committee man George Kula Harris sparked outrage among the city's minorities and prompted a state investigation into segregation in the city. Meanwhile, angry minority parents filed suit against the city and Kula Harris. That's sending out a clear signal both to the parents of linguistic minority children here in the system and to the State Department of Education that Lowell is not ready at this point uh, for the 20th century in terms of ed equal educational opportunity and that it may have to submit itself to either federal court or state court supervision in the very near future around this question. The summer of 1987 was best known for heated political races. I'll continue with the year in review tomorrow. In Lowell, Julie Stiniford for Local Cable News.